If you want to strengthen your novel's plot, I'm going to talk about a really accessible way to do that. A few weeks ago, I made a video about how to make sure your novel makes sense using a writing tip from Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Here's a reminder if you missed it. We can take these beats, which are basically the beats of your outline, and if the words and then belong between those beats, you're f***ed, basically. You got, you got something pretty boring. What should happen between every beat that you've written down is either the word therefore or but. Right? So, so what I'm saying is that you come up with an idea and it's like, okay, this happens, right? And then this happens. No, no, no. It should be this happens and therefore this happens. But this happens, therefore this happens. Like Trey said, it's those, those two but because therefore that gives you the causation between each beat and that makes that that's a story. Since then, I've gone back over the second draft of my novel, Project Ventus, to try and figure out where the and thens were, and then to hopefully turn them into therefores. So I'm going to show you how I use this tip or this technique to fix a big problem in my novel, and how you can do the same thing for your story, even if you don't have a big problem. So here's a step-by-step -step of what I did. The first step was to find all of the points within the novel where an and then might pop up. And this is often at instances where your character makes a decision or they take action. To make it easier to find these instances, I very briefly summarized what happens in each of my chapters and then listed them. There's a hundred chapters or parts to my book and it's made up of several story threads mixed together. So I separated each thread. It did take me quite a while, but it's actually quite a handy thing to have. The next step is to take those summaries or those plot points and kind of analyze them. Look at how they relate to each other and see if you can figure out whether there's an and then or a therefore between each of them. The best method I found to make this easier is to just ask myself questions about each of the plot points. Like, would a person do this? Is this a decision that somebody would make? Was there a better, more obvious decision? That kind of thing. And if you find you can't quite answer those questions or the answer to them isn't really what you want, that's a good indication you could have an and then. If you've got a therefore, it'll just make sense. When I did this, and it will probably happen to you as well, I was surprised to see that most of my story was made up of therefores already. However, there definitely were and thens that I need to fix, and one of them jumped out immediately as one of the worst offenders, and that's the big problem that I mentioned. That's step three, I suppose. Once you've identified your and then, how do you patch it up? There's probably loads of ways, but here's how I approach mine. My and then concerns one of my main characters, Karina, and a really important choice that she has to make. For some background, she's an independent person, she loves to learn, she has a lot of empathy, and she's a leader, but she doesn't really ever feel like it. Before I go into detail, there are very minor spoilers in this video and other videos I've made about Project Ventus, but the thing is, I've currently got no plans for how I'm gonna release this or how I'm gonna try and get it published or anything like that. So really, we're just here to talk about writing first and foremost, so let's just do that. Anyway, the problem. This needs a little bit of context, so stay with me. Early in the book, Karina takes a weird job at a research base on an isolated island. And the thing about Karina is she's running. She's outpacing something in her life that she doesn't want to catch up with her. She's hiding from her life, essentially. Therefore, hiding herself away on an isolated island, away from everybody, kind of makes sense. So far, so good. Forgot to mention, Karina has a quite a visceral fear of open water, which is something I explain fairly early on in the book. So the journey to the island is really quite daunting and kind of harrowing for her, but because she's got herself into this pattern of just endlessly running so things can't catch up with her, she pushes through it and she makes the journey. It's one of those metaphorical moments where in the back of her mind she's thinking, maybe if I get to this island, then my problems can't catch me there, they can't cross the water and I'll be safe. I've done this in what I hope is a subtle metaphorical way. We'll see. So Karina's initially misled into thinking she'll be working entirely alone at this research base, but then when she arrives, she discovers she'll actually be working with a partner. Also, the job itself doesn't really make that much sense, so she's not really thrilled about any of this. There's a little bit of mystery about the island, and there's a little bit of intrigue that I used to tempt her there. I mean, it's pretty clear that the place has secrets. This unexpected partner, though, is not forthcoming, is pretty cold, not very welcoming, and clearly not going to answer any of Karina's questions or help her to unravel any of the mysteries of this island. Therefore, Karina decides, this setup is weird, I'm not into any of this, I'm going back to the mainland. And then she decides to stay. That's the big problem. That's the big and then that I needed to solve. So what did I change to make Karina stay on the island, but more importantly, to make that decision make sense? What I needed clearly was a therefore or a but because, and it had to be something compelling enough that 
Karina would make what is arguably an illogical decision. And the thing is, readers can smell an illogical decision from a mile off and they don't like it. It's probably happened to you. You probably watched a horror film where the victim running away from a knife-wielding maniac, they run up the stairs instead of out the front door. It's maddening. I couldn't have that. I had to fix it, so I took a look at what was available to help me do that. My first thought was to use Karina's fear of open water. This is established early on in the book, it's something the reader knows about, and I felt like I could get at least some of the way using that. I could reasonably say that leaving the island, crossing the water again would be pretty daunting because the journey across already was. But the water just felt like a secondary reason for me felt like it wasn't strong enough to hold her to the island by itself. I needed a primary reason. So what else did I have to work with? Well, there's the island and the job. The island is a beautiful place and the job is interesting or at least unique. The problem is they're both inanimate, passive forces. They might be appealing, but they can't actively persuade. But what can persuade are characters, people, the very thing stories are all about. There's my catchphrase, take a shot. And because it was just Karina and this new partner alone on the island, I knew the persuasion would have to come from this partner. But I'd introduced him as being really standoffish and cold and not at all forthcoming. Karina knows that he's got the secrets to this island and the job, but he's just not telling her what they are. Honestly, this partner character is the main thing pushing Karina to leave. So what I had to do is flip that. The way I did that was, as Karina's packing up her stuff, preparing for the old Irish goodbye, never to return to this island again, this weird, cold, strange character comes to her and asks her in a quiet, almost desperate voice to please stay, not to leave him alone here. As I said before, Karina's an empathetic character. She also loves to learn, she likes to be independent, and she likes to make her own way. The change in this character brings back the opportunities that Karina saw in this job in the first place. It brings back what motivated her to give this all a shot. The other character showing a bit of vulnerability and honesty reduces the force on Karina that's pushing her to leave. It makes the answers to the questions that she's got seem more attainable and therefore more attractive. It also makes her decision to abandon all this, go back to the mainland and just keep endlessly running make less sense. Not to mention, because of her empathy, it feels that much harder to leave when someone potentially vulnerable is begging you to stay. Therefore, she decides to stay long enough to hear him out, as long as he'll explain to her what the hell's going on on this island. I also reduced the size of the decision from decides to spend months potentially alone with a stranger on an island to decides to spend five minutes getting the answers to questions that she already wants. Then, obviously, events escalate and leaving the island is no longer an option. To clarify a bit, in order to take this and then and turn it into a therefore, in order to reinforce the decision that Karina just made, I created an obstacle for leaving, which was crossing the water. I had another character exploit her empathy, which is a quality I'd already told the reader that she had. I'd also seemingly reduced the size of the decision to something that was more palatable. That took what seemed like a random change of heart and made it into a decision that was more easily understandable by a reader. And you might be thinking, hang on a sec, speaking of random changes of heart, did your other character not immediately change from this cold, distant, emotionless character into someone who's literally begging a stranger to stay with them and not leave them alone? Yeah, you're absolutely right. The thing is, that change in characterization of that character is actually a plot point that spans the entire length of the novel. I can't really explain it in good time here, but it's something I'd thought ahead about. His character was always what I refer to in my mind as a softening character, so we slowly learn more about him as the novel progresses and his character softens. So what I did here with this change of characterization is really just show a chink in his armor or a crack in his protective shell that will make a lot more sense much later. I also made sure that Karina reads him really well and speculates about this in her own narration, so it's not as though I just don't acknowledge it. Of course it's a work in progress, it needs more editing, but for now I'm quite happy with how I turned and then she decided to stay into, therefore, she decided to stay. I think this exercise is well worth trying no matter what kind of story you're writing. And with that in mind, here's a couple of things I learned that might help you strengthen your plot or expand it to make it deeper. Firstly, if you spot an and then and you want to change it to a therefore, you can't have it all happen in one moment. What I mean by that is you can't just have an asteroid fall out of the sky and crush your main character's house, 
Therefore, they decide to take that trip they've always been putting off. Readers hate that kind of surprise because there's absolutely nothing they can do to see it coming and it just seems like it's rooted in nothing. You can still use an unexpected event to turn an and then into a therefore, but the trick is the event must be unexpected, but the character's behavior and reaction to it can't be. If you want to use a surprise event, you've got to go back and lay a breadcrumb trail for the reader so that the character's reaction when this unexpected thing happens makes sense. That's what I tried to do with Karina. Her fear of water, her empathy, her thirst for knowledge and for answers hopefully makes that decision a little easier to swallow for readers. Hopefully. The big aim here really is to get readers to go, of course they would do that because I know this about them. So the event can be unexpected, but the character's behavior has to be understandable. It has to make sense. And that sense doesn't come from the event. It comes from what the reader already knows about the character. Once you've changed your and then into your therefore, you need to go back and lay the groundwork for it. Have a bit of control and F, take some time. It makes all of the difference. The next tip is far broader, but timing is everything. And I don't mean the timing of your plot points. I'm not saying you can only use this at the beginning of your story. It fits for beginning, middle, end. I don't think there's a bad time to change an and then into a therefore, no matter where in the story you are. By timing, I mean when you choose to do this exercise or this analysis, whatever it is. From my experience applying this to a second draft of a novel, I think it would definitely be easier to apply this when you're still in the planning stages or the early stages of writing. It's still possible to do it later, of course it is, it just takes a lot more time, it's a little more difficult to make sure you get all of that groundwork done, there's a lot of control and F, but it's still possible. It's just that at that point, if you've already drafted your story, the paint's starting to dry a bit and it just gets harder to move things around. So figuring this stuff out and constantly checking as you write your outline, whether you've got and thens or therefores, I think would be a huge advantage when you come to actually write the story. The bottom line is, even if it's really hard work, I think this exercise is well worth doing because it will strengthen your book and it will make you a little less susceptible to readers spotting plot points or rolling their eyes at some decision that your character's made. It adds causality to your plot points, it makes the story flow, it's less likely to frustrate readers or to lose their investment in the story. And the biggest thing really is it forces you to be brutal with your story and that can only ever serve to strengthen it. Overall, this has been pretty hard work and I've got loads more work ahead of me, but already I would say 10 out of 10 for this, would do it again in an instant. I hope this has been helpful in some way Thanks so much for watching as always and happy writing.